But anyway, so we've got 100 billion wasted on EU regulations according to the um, Better Regulation Commission annual report forward by Tony Blair. So we know that's a government figure. And um, we've lost at least 40 billion um, annually with the closing down of companies uh, because of European regulation. The most daft regulation now is that car paint shops have to use water-based paints, children's paints, to, to repair cars with. Mm -hmm. so and, and cars, when they're new, from the factory have got water-based mm -hmm. paints, quite a few of them. Yeah. So that means that your average sort of two-man-in-a-garage car, car repair shop has gone out of business because only the massive ones can make this ridiculous paint stick. You've got to have massive facilities. So every little bump you have in a car now is a thousand pounds to fix because it's only a big company and a huge process that can actually paint your car again. That's the latest one. One of the first regulations got rid of abattoirs and all our cattle were being shipped to Europe because we weren't allowed to slaughter our own capital, uh, cattle. Of course, none of this ever applied in Europe. Well, uh, no, we have got some abattoirs here, I'm sure Oh, we oh yeah, we had to build brand new ones under EU regulation. Oh yeah, and then now we're allowed to slaughter our own cattle again, but now we have big expensive avatars and you can't like a farmer can't kill yeah, one sheep it's, just, it's legal you're not allowed to i think a lot of it's going on though you know <laughs> i've been offered the odd lamb myself <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully yeah okay so uh, all this red tape more and more and more red mm. tape yeah <clears throat> and and it's generally quangos that that enforce eu regulations we're spending 167 billion on quangos um, <clears throat> we're losing 40 billion a year through industries like, like the Rover Car Company uh, that have closed down. All these little um, village petrol stations were forced to close down under EU regulations. Hundreds of businesses have gone. And yeah. do you know, one of the things that really annoys me is no business has stood up and said, the EU is closing my business. You would think small business would be up in arms. Well, they, they blame the government, don't they? They blame the government. <clears throat> um, Mark from York says, is immigration a Frankfurt School technique? Oh, gosh, absolutely. Overwhelming immigration, overwhelming our infrastructure. The government said there'd be 13,000 uh, 13, come in when the EU got control of our borders. Because in anybody who's in the EU is now allowed to come to England without any kind of... It's a bit more than Let that. or hindrance. It's a bit more than that. The EU has controlled our borders since the 1997 Amsterdam Treaty, and the government said 13,000 would come in. We've had about 10 million in total. They, all, they never gave us the figures, but they did let it slip in 2008 that 2.7 million had come in in one year. And that was mostly from Poland, wasn't it? Well, uh, they did give us the total. F yes, that was right, yeah. Yeah. And um, not only can our infrastructure not handle it, you know, all these cities now full of immigrants, you can't drive to school, you can't drive to work, the infrastructure, the roads can't handle it. We've got 380,000 English people a year emigrating to get away from the overcrowding, and the idea is to create overcrowding and tension. It's a Frankfurt School subversion technique. So they are particularly delighted to pull Muslims into the country and then try to teach us to dislike them. That is government policy. And you know, they're trying to create tension and they're doing a damn good job. But the English people are really terribly nice and very laid back. And their plans to create tension have not gone anything like as well as they hoped they would. Why is that, do you think? Because we're just nice guys. I mean, we've ex we're tolerant. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. According to the Frankfurt School, we're unreasonably tolerant. Yes, we're unreasonably tolerant. We, we should be fighting on the streets now, which is their plan. I mean, you know, it, it is true, isn't it, that, you know, our schools, they're teaching multiple religions, mm. and, yes. and you, you see programmes about schools where the children speak 30 or 40 or yeah, even more right. languages, which yes. is yes. extraordinary. Yeah. The, the, the technique destroys identity. If you flood a nation with immigrants, you destroy their identity. And that is happening, and it's, it's a stunningly successful technique. So they're destroying the family, they're destroying our industry, they're destroying our schools, infrastructure. Tax, yeah. Schools, the tax on the teachers, you know, teachers are not allowed to do anything now. Uh, that's deliberate, that's another Frankfurt School. Well, do you think that we should have corporal punishment in schools? 
I don't want to get into that debate, but a teacher should be able to control their class and instill discipline on them. But it's hard to know what they can do, you know, they you know, well, write out lines uh, 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 or something. Yeah, but until they got to the point where, um, you know, a teacher can be sued by any student, there really wasn't a problem. But it's the Frankfurt School subversion technique to undermine schools and teachers. Undermine authority. Yes. And also, I know that head teachers have enormous amounts of paperwork to do, so they can't spend any yes. time teaching That's right. or managing the teaching. Yes. And, yep. and, and I, I also remember reading recently That's that correct, a yep. lot of teachers don't want to become head teachers because it's... All paperwork, yeah. It's not the same job anymore. Yes, and it's generally quangos that are implementing that. Quangos are loading teachers down with so much paperwork they can't be teachers. It's deliberate. And it's generally common purpose David, inside quangos. We're going to go for another break now. Once again, if you'd like to text in your questions or comments to David Noakes, please do so now. Text 8778 with the word EDGE and then your text. See you very soon. <music> Welcome back to On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers, and my special guest, David Noakes. Right, David, I'm having loads and loads of texts, um, and they're scrolling off before I can read them. Some of them are coming in so fast, basically saying, what can we do? OK, there are things we can do. And um, this is an incredibly exciting time, because you can actually save your own future if you act. You know, we've really got something to do, and it's the most exciting and worthwhile thing to do that we could possibly have, saving our own freedom. Is it, is it like, do you think it's, it's kind of like at the start of the Second World War when people thought, you know, there's a real nasty enemy, we've really all got to band together and fight them on the beaches and so on? Is it a bit like that? Is it, should we have that kind of spirit? We think? should have that spirit, but we can't get that message out because... Freemasons and Common Purpose, the government controls all our media. It's not this programme, apparently. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> but there aren't many like, well, there are none really like this, are there? That's right, yeah. Um, but what can we do? Well, we need a permanent general strike. Now, isn't it amazing that there are probably 20 things we can do that would work? and you need at least 10,000 people to do it, and there are five political parties that have got more than 10,000 members, and none of them are using those 10,000 members to do anything at all, apart from get themselves, the leaders, re-elected onto the gravy trains. None of them are fighting against the EU, and that is the proof that those leaderships are working for the EU. So UKIP does not do any of these campaigns. The BNP? Does not do any of these campaigns. It's how you know the leadership is working for the EU. So they, they make grandiose speeches, which, which make the leaders look very good, but the grassroots are never mobilised. And in UKIP in particular, if you try to start a serious anti-EU campaign, the Freemasonry regional, organize, regional organisers close you down like that. And, uh, you know, I was ruthlessly closed down on more than one occasion, and eventually they were rigging my elections, and I wrote to the leadership complaining of Freemasonry free regional organisers. This is in Cornwall, wasn't yes, it? Yes, that's right, yeah. Anyway, what, what can we do? We need a permanent general strike. The quickest way to get out is a national general strike until our corrupt and criminal politicians either resign or strike out the six EU treaties as illegal under the British Constitution, which they are. They don't need to be repealed, they're illegal. But while we have a corrupt um, legal system, corrupt law lords, corrupt courts... Um, How likely is it, then, that that would happen? If, 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 you're saying, if you're saying that all the people who are in any kind of influential role in this yeah. country yeah. are already yeah. corrupted and unlikely to be helpful to this cause. Yes. But if we get a general strike, I used to run a newspaper. Well, I started five newspapers. I got up to 100,000 circulation. It costs about 15,000 a month to get 100,000 newspapers out there. Now, you would have thought that some wealthy business that realised it was going to be closed under EU regulation or was already losing a fortune under EU regulation would be happy to pay that 15,000 to get those profits back, to get the 